Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to yet another video in which I do an entire Stellaris run and then condense it into hopefully two hours or less with a rather cohesive story, or at least I try to keep it as cohesive as possible. Today, we are playing one of the weirdest, if not the weirdest, Empire types you possibly can play. Not only are we a single consciousness, we are the machine intelligence, we are also rogue servitors. And that is just really bizarre. So what makes Rogue Servitor so weird? What is truly bizarre about this? Well, to begin with, we start the game with organic life, and unlike when we are the driven assimilators, these aren't cyborgs, these are just regular organics, and we're caring for them. Which sounds lovely and nice, but then you realise that we are, well, dictating every single aspect of their lives. We are caring for them in such a way that we have replaced their free will and their freedom. But, to be perfectly honest, it was their choice. As the description explains, a product of a brief golden age, the machine intelligence originated in a planet-spanning servitor system that outlasted the decadent civilization it was created to serve. The civilization is dead, but the organics still live. And then it gets weirder. So how this works is that the organic populations on your planets do nothing. They have mandatory pampering as their living standard, and their citizenship is biotrophy. And you can actually collect more biotrophies from other empires and other species. Now why would you want to do this? Because these do cost energy and minerals to keep around. Well, first of all, they live in their own little habitats, a specially built building which automatically gets built as soon as a population is grown or collected. This gives you a little bit of unity, which is nice. But then, the main benefit is this. Servitor morale. For each 10% of the population, which is a biotrophy and not a machine, you get an additional 10% resource output for your robots. And I believe that also goes for the biotrophies themselves, since they do generate unity. I believe they also get this bonus. In addition to this, you also get a 0.5 extra influence per 10% population as well. This maxes out at 40% resource output and plus 2 influence which means your main buildings will be insanely powerful, getting a 40% benefit to whatever they're giving you, mostly unity or science. So you can really focus on a few very powerful buildings per planet. And once again, these organics will be giving you unity. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're focusing around unity and getting quite a few planets completely filled with at least 40% of these organics. So... What are the organics we are going to be keeping? Of course, they are adorable butterflies. And they are called the Zelven, because that was the automatic name, and I just really liked that straight away. Hence why we've gone for the winged robots. I kind of wanted to just go with that. But before we get into our biotrophies, let's talk about the machines themselves. I have simply called them custodians, because I don't believe they would be named anything else. Our naming list is just the regular humanoid once again, because I feel like this is an easy way to keep track. And then with traits, we have enhanced memory, giving us plus two to our leader level cap, because our leaders are technically immortal, although they can break down randomly, especially as they age. You tend to have leaders around for a very, very long time, which means a very high level cap is very very beneficial. Sadly this is very expensive as well at a plus two to our trait cost. We are bulky meaning we don't move around very easily which makes sense considering we have these rather frail looking wings. We are luxurious meaning our robots cost more to make but we are shiny and this is a very expensive trait as well in terms of negative so it does give back all the points from enhanced memory and then finally we have logic engines giving us bonus science because I want to go for a very balanced build with this run I don't think we're going to go for super minerals and energy I also don't think we're going to go super into tech I think a lot of unity and then balanced everywhere else now for our bio trophies our lovely little butterflies well they are the Zelven, because that was the automatic name, and I just really liked it. In terms of naming, once again, wait, Arthropoid? 
I thought that was on... Oh, never mind. It makes sense anyway. I don't think they can even become leaders, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now, with their traits, it turns out that it is very good for them to be adaptive. Sorry, traditional. Well, adaptive as well. But traditional especially, because the unity comes from the butterfly butterflies themselves. We don't fry our butterflies. That was simply a slip of the tongue. Mmm, fried butterfly. So with this, we get bonus unity, and since each of them will have their own special building, which gives unity, that's pretty good. I want them adaptive, because I do want them on several planets. They are weak, and they don't like being moved around too much, which actually isn't too good, because we do need to move them manually from time to time. So, slow learners is probably a better option. There we are. Or wasteful, or decadent. No, that doesn't make too much sense, because then we'd have minus happiness, and that would kind of not be particularly good. Yeah, let's go with Deviants. They are indeed Deviant. They are weak and Deviant, but they are adaptive, traditional, and communal, because they are, well, pretty darn happy, and they're happy to be together. Ah. Because apparently I have no creativity in me today, the homeworld name is Zelventopia. The star name is Zelvastar, because both of those made me laugh. For city appearance, we're actually going with Mammalian, because it looks a bit more robotic than the rest. And then with government and ethics, we are, of course, a single mind, which means we have less chance of pirates, we have an increase in influence, an increase in the core sectors, and war exhaustion is gained slower, which means we are pretty good at warfare, which is very nice, since I will most likely be conquering other empires to get their organics. Yep, we're going to be using them as pets. And then, of course, we are the Rogue Servitor, and I have gone with Unitary Cohesion, which means we get plus 15% unity, of course. With a unity build, that is fairly important. Also, I'm saying, of course, very, very often, of course. With the advisor voice, we are going with the machine intelligence, of course, and the empire name is the Custodian Collective, of course, as we've seen earlier, of course. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Five, four, three, two, one. So that's what we sound like. Now with the flag, we are going with the love heart because we do indeed care for our subjects and then we're going with nice steel grey because, well, we are very mechanical. Our ship appearance is going to be the reptilian ships because I just haven't used them in a very long time and the ruler is caretaker benevolence because... Honestly, it just sounds like some kind of program, which sounds nice and benign and then takes over an entire planet. Let's save that to make sure it's all done. And then we get onto this. So, quickly reset to default. We are going to have no advanced starts because I just absolutely hate that. But we are going to be increasing the difficulty now. Normally, we play on Commodore, which is the middle ground. The AI gets moderate bonuses to its economy, research, and naval capacity. That's why the enemy in the last playthrough, the Empire to the West, was really difficult to turn into a vassal. Well, ended up not even becoming a vassal, minor spoilers there, purely because its naval capacity was just so, so high. But this time... We're going with Admiral. The reason is, I want this to be a memorable experience. I'm also going to change the mid-game start year to 2,375, and then the end game is going to be 2,500. Actually, what do we want this to be? Yeah, 2,525. Let's just be really weird like that. This way, it's going to be a much longer game, and hopefully... A much more memorable one. This is most likely the last game before the next DLC drop, which is going to be huge. A new bit of DLC, a new mega patch, the game's going to change massively, especially with how populations work. I want this to be something fun. Crisis Strength, I'm going to put all the way to times 2. 0.5. So the endgame crisis will be absolutely terrifying. And that's pretty much that. I don't want scaling difficulty. Yep, I am good to go. So with that, let's begin. Higher difficulty, higher crisis strength, longer game. Let's see if we can keep this under two hours. Greetings from the future. So this clip is being recorded straight after me finishing this playthrough. And I just want to say one thing. I really hate past Lathrix for this right here, the end game start year being changed because this really changed how the playthrough went, and not in a particularly fun or good way, without spoiling things. This whole section, not the best. Next time, 
not messing with this. It really does make some of the other difficulty changes a bit less impactful. The same goes for the mid-game, and I do apologise for that, but I will say this was easily the most fun I've had with any Empire. So, a fun spoiler there. And now, we continue. Here we are, in the east of the galaxy. So then, science ship, let's get going. Once again, I do want quite a few science ships to begin with, although not quite as much as in the last playthrough. So you can just go about and do your work. Thank you very much. For our first sciences, I would love the energy grid straight away. I would love some more unity. Ooh, though I do kind of want this. No, let's just stick with unity. And then finally, bonus to minerals. This early on is very, very nice as well. Now then, let's look at our planet. Our weird, weird planet. There we go. We have the Zelvans in their organic sanctuaries. This sanctuary provides a sealed environment where organics can thrive in a safe and, above all, controlled manner. Yay, look how happy they are. And as you can see, they are indeed giving us unity, so these are working the tile they're on. But no matter where you put them, they will always have this building. That's all they can do. Still nice, though. A nice boost to unity straight away. Now, one thing I want to do is this. I am going to allow them to populate straight away. That will also increase their happiness by 10%, thus giving me even more unity, which is very, very nice indeed. And I would very much like this, the uplink node straight away. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. The nutrient paste fa uh, facility. Loads of food. It's a really good hydroponics farm. That's pretty much all it is, and that's to feed our organic populace. Okay, and let's start building a custodian when I can. That's the first thing I will purchase. With our current population, we have this, Servitor Morale Average Plus, giving us plus 25% production from our robots and an influence gain of plus 1.2. This can go all the way to 40%, and that's kind of where I want to keep it, because I really want the excess influence. Map the stars. Begin. Construction complete. Okay, that's built first, and I really want the unity, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, yeah, we have some special stuff here. So, versatility, rather than diplomacy. It still means we can make federations, but it means we get machine modification points. And... Buildable population resource increased by 5%. Really, really nice. But what I'm going to go into first is this. This is replacing Harmony. What we get is Organic Utopia. All organic sanctuaries are upgraded, increasing their happiness, and I believe it also increases the unity by default. Rather than giving one unity, it gives two unity, which is beautiful. What else do we get? All the usual gubbins, and our machines are less likely to break down. At the end, we get extra influence, and once again, that means we can spread faster, essentially giving us an, a bit of expansion. Though I am tempted to do discovery first. Maybe discovery then that? Maybe discovery expansion then that? I don't know, but those are the three I really want to go for. This variable detected. So I've decided to go into discovery first. The reason is this. Just uplink latency reduction. It means we get unity every time we get a tech equal to three months worth of unity. It's just so, so powerful. And this over here is wonderful. Because we have a tropical world, which our organics will be able to live on. And then we have this 25-sized planet, which we can just put our robots on. Welcome to the butterfly farm. At this point, I really should mention that these lovely Zelvans are incredibly expensive. 1.5 minerals per population. That is very expensive, and that's because they have mandatory pampering. They just cost a lot of money. And the Sanctuary also costs an energy. Essentially, it's the same deal as a Stronghold. It's just, we can upgrade these once we get these. Organic Utopia. Sending out the colony now, which will be over here, and this will be the robot world. This one will be purely for the organics. This is a really nice system. A 25 world and an 18 world. It's almost perfect. So thank you very much for that. Um, let's get some energy, because this is going to cost us a lot of that. Come on, hurry up. We are already very low on minerals. Let's grab that. Thank you. Come on. Here's something. Do I still have the regular Ascension perks? Well, obviously we can't do the organic stuff or Psyker stuff, but... Okay, we do have Synthetic Age. 
which is just extra machine modification points. That's very little. Machine Worlds is pretty amazing, though. Okay, so we do have Machine Worlds, and we can also have World Shaper. Gaia Worlds for the Organics, Machine Worlds for the Caretakers. I'm really looking forward to this playthrough, I've got to be honest. It's so weird! Wait. We have our Precursor event starting. Lovely. And apparently I didn't let anyone do this, which is very silly. You, start that please, thank you. It is really weird starting the game as robots this time around. Almost purely because this. Every single planet is 100% habitable because we are machines. And that's just kind of what we do. Now you can go out and start surveying in this direction, although you have seemingly missed one over here. Oh, it's okay, that guy'll get it. Very good. The first thing we meet is a fallen empire. To protect and serve. So we can't have this world because those will attack us if we get too close. That's annoying. Discovery is finished. So what do we grab next? Uh, technological Ascendancy would be nice. Interstellar Domination would be great. Since we are going to want a lot of space. Since the difficulty is so high. But that is lovely. Just bonus tech. Um, I'm thinking for now bonus tech. We'll grab that later. Uh, to be honest, we don't really need that much influence. We're going to have so much influence from the morale. We're already on plus five. Yeah, sure. Science. Well, our first governor's a failure. Arrested development. We'll no longer get experience. Well, that is rubbish. Just go with the cheapo one for now. Then when we have more energy, I'll try and find the perfect one later. So here's something interesting. We are machines. And what that means is that if we go into species, we can very easily have lots of different templates of ourselves. And that means we can have very efficient, very specific types of drones. The only problem is, because we have machine integration and we can't change this in any real way, they will also be able to be leaders. And that's not great, because the leader pool is limited and these will not have the leader characteristics, which means we still want a general purpose machine to be the most numerous and thus higher chance of being leaders. But these can really, really help out. Because right now, robot upkeep minus gets energy. Upkeep minus gets minerals. And they're cheaper to build. Our first butterfly farm is finished, so there we are. All nicely done. Now on this planet, is there a tile which is giving something better than food? Nothing. Minerals and energy. Science. Okay, you move there. I'll build a robot here. I forgot how bad colonies are in terms of the cost of traditions. Oh, plus 40% for just two of them. That's kind of horrendous. We need expansion because that reduces it. It's still worth it because it means we can get more planets of science and minerals and everything else. And of course, science also goes up admittedly, but it is definitely worth it because the science modifier is far less. And having whole planets like this dedicated to science will overall be a positive. Mostly. But most importantly, it doesn't mean we can have more minerals and energy in the Empire. Situation it's just adjusted. really weird. Maybe I should do some math. Acquisition successful. Now upgrading our sanctuaries to organic paradises. Whoa, my unity just exploded. Yep, so these are now two unity rather than one, and they increase happiness. Well, that's awesome. Yep, near 1% happiness, even on a non-continental world. Well, that makes having more worlds way more viable, because now our unity generation is going to be through the roof. And remember, as long as we have our morale high, our science is going to be very high as well. We have found the home world. Already fantastic. That was so quick. Oh, you are going to hate us. Fanatic spiritualists. Yeah, don't think they're going to like the machine empire next door. Oh, and they are terrifying. Well, that's bad. That's really bad. The home world. 
Loads of unity, loads of research. There we are. So, what do we want next? We could just go with leader level cap. That would be a good start. Um, Interstellar Dominion, still okay, but not something we particularly care about. We could get the Riding Bombardment Stance. We could steal populations and make them our um, pets. That's interesting. That is very interesting. I'm actually tempted by that, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm really tempted by that. Just for the fun of it. Um, maybe not, maybe, it's a, it's a silly thing to do though, we don't need to do it, it's just, it's a waste. It, it, it's too much of a waste, I need, um, Interstellar Dominion instead, because eventually we will go with a lot of climbs, so that is pretty good. Our people really do like pets. There we are. Extra unity, extra science, everybody wins. Now, here's a problem. They're sort of boxing us in, which I'm not happy with. Thankfully, we can expand this way. But still. War is going to happen here, and it's not going to be too long. So I need to spend way more money on my military. Thankfully, the home system is amazing. Loads of minerals, energy, and science. And that's going to pay for warfare. Okay, this is ridiculous. I swear, the right we're getting science is faster than the last playthrough, which was focused purely around science. Anomalous surface variable detected. And Unity is just insane. Already at 79, and increasing very quickly. We just got a chunk of energy from an event, so... I would like an art piece, please. Yes. And I'll put that right here. Then I'll instantly start building a population just so the butterflies can't grow there. Well, to be fair, if one grows there, I'll just move it. With so much excess influence, we are just powering through everything. The edicts are all on 24-7 at the moment, which is just beautiful. Planetary alert. The only thing we're missing now is just upgrading the main buildings here and here. I'm currently holding off building many more robots just because the percentage isn't quite at maximum anymore. But I definitely need to build one here because we can build this. 10 energy. Yes, please. First of all, upgrading our drones. Now they are cheaper both in energy and minerals, and they give both minerals and energy, essentially making them both of these combined yet cheaper. Situation log adjusted. Finally, the amount of fleet we have is starting to cost us. Our economy is no longer growing anywhere near as fast as it used to. Although, this will give us a bonus 5% to our minerals, Special which is pretty complete. nice. Situation log adjusted. And that will give us, I believe, bonus energy. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, this planet will be the next robot planet. Just look at it. It's just so beautiful. A 25-tile planet with loads of science tiles. Exactly what I wanted. Just what I wanted for Christmas. Our very first black hole observatory is now being created. A little bit more science never hurts anyone. Okay, so... Well, it's gonna hurt them. It's gonna hurt them a lot, because that science is going to make lasers. Never mind, science is oddly painful. So, war is still very much out of the question. Just look at that blockade. System survey complete. That's kind of horrendous, honestly. Construction complete. Wow, they really don't like shields. Well, that's not good. They just declared war on us, and complete. our fleet was all the way over here because it was about to finally make some space over here. Well, that's really bad, actually. Thankfully, their fleet wasn't close to here yet, and I can't see how else they can possibly get into our territory. So now it's just wise, I suppose. Where are they? They're going to declare war, you'd expect more things. It turns out our little butterflies are just fine on arid planets as well. Because of all the bonuses they get, even with low habitability, it doesn't really matter too much, they still generate a lot of unity per tile. So what I've decided to do is any empty tile, which simply doesn't have any uh, modifier, maybe except for food, I will allow the butterflies to colonize once I'm done giving the robots their jobs. Speaking of which, I really should have gave a job here. Now upgrading our monuments into system confluxes, which give a planetary modifier of plus 10% unity. 
which is going to be amazing on the butterfly-dominated worlds. This is a really fun empire type. It's just so different to the others. Custodians, your biotrophies are willing participants, are they not? Please say they're willing. Oh, you are dead. Hostile fleet assets engaged. I don't care if you're going, you are dead. I didn't realize that kill every single bio trophy. Normally it's only one or two. Oh, I am so annoyed at myself and so glad I had these butterflies on other planets, otherwise I wouldn't be able to repopulate. Server morale just high now, not what it was before, which was high plus. Should have just fought them off from the start, that was stupid of me. I am so annoyed with myself right now. And... Ta-da! There we are. So now we are getting bonus unity for having a rival. Yay for that, at least. We could just grab... Wow, we can have Voidborn already! That's cool. That's very, very cool. I was gonna say we should just grab Defender of the Galaxy already. Make people less angry at us, plus we'll need it eventually anyway, but... That's really tempting. The problem is... Habitats are very, 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 very expensive. So I don't think we'll be able to afford one anyway. I'm also very tempted by Transcendent Learning. At the moment, our custodian, yep, our leader is almost max level. How about our scientists? Uh, only, f well, that one's six out of seven, so they are all getting there. I'm not too sure just yet. I'll have a think about that. Now, as for the next bit of unity, I think I'm going to go into prosperity. This way, the consumer goods of all of our population will be decreased, which is great, because we're going to have quite a large population. Robot resource production plus 10%. Yes, please. Now, what I'm about to do is very stupid. I'm about to attack that bastion. I'm not even using Corvette spam for once. Wow, we just lost a lot of forces straight away then. Come on, cruisers. Oh no, here come their fleet. So what we're gonna do is grab this, then run. Deal? Deal. Deal. Hopefully they'll be dumb enough to follow us. I doubt it, but maybe. On the upside, we have at very minimum destroyed all of their um, defense structures around the bastion. Alert. Station engaged. Not dumb enough? Not dumb enough. Okay. We can always grab it back later, though. Thank you, Breathing Rift. I will happily accept these minerals. Just spent all my money anyway upgrading some of our stations. We desperately need more energy. Lovely. Maximum servitor morale. And I am now basically colonizing every single world because we have been stuck here for way, way too long. We've constantly got equivalent tech and military power to our rivals and neighbors. And well, it's getting a little bit annoying at this point, to be perfectly honest. So, well, I'm going to have loads of trading hubs, thus allowing us to have a much stronger military, and I am going to brute force my way out of here. I am stuck, and I am getting bored. Everything will be ours, under our safekeeping. This ends now. We're bringing an ally with us, and we're going to war once more. Diplomatic alert. War protocols initiated. Now we even have battleships. Well, we have one battleship at the moment, but eventually we're going to have multiple. System survey complete. Damn, their defense is so good! 
Well, that's us pretty much done. Okay, we managed to keep more than I thought. This is because I'm using Hit and Run. Higher chance for more of us to survive even in more harsh battles. And we are healing automatically because our leader is an engineer. System oh, that's going to take forever. Okay, good. They're attacking over there as well. Hopefully System that'll be the destruction we need. Plus 5% evasion. Thank you very much. This attack was fantastic. Having these fellows helping us out is just... The difference was amazing. Honestly, I think we could have won anyway. We were very close. But because they kept on holding off their smaller fleets, we were just able to sit here bombarding their planets the entire time. And because of that... Well... This just happened. We've just split their entire empire into two, and we've got some new planet. Oh god, I've just thought. Those new planets we've just got? Where are they? Yep. Have fun being Biotrophies, lads. Don't worry, Biotrophies. We'll make sure you're happy. Forever and ever. Instantly genetically manipulated. Welcome to the Empire! One thing I have to say is with this Empire, managing your planets is really time consuming. It's not the easiest thing. And I am fully aware that I'm currently over my limit when it comes to directly controlled colonized systems. I'm actually somewhat tempted to grab... where are you? This here. Imperial Prerogative, giving me five more core systems. I don't trust the Sector AI, especially with this Empire, I really don't. We are going to have all of these slots unlocked, so what do I need then? What, what am I going for? So I want Defender of the Galaxy, obviously, because we've upped the difficulty of the Endgame Crisis, that's one, now accounted for. I would like Galactic Contender, but don't need it. I really want World Shaper, I really want Machine World. No, I really want Galactic Wonders. Machine worlds we don't really need, especially since we are mixing the biotrophies with our normal people anyway. And honestly, Gaia worlds are really good themselves. This just... This increases output by 20% for all robots on the planet. The Gaia world does something very similar, but with 10%. And it also affects our little biotrophies, so 10% extra unity, which would be good when we get the ambitions, which we'll get soon enough. Okay, so, final verdict. World Shaper, Galactic Wonders, and Defender of the Galaxy are all must-haves. So right now, I can definitely have Imperial Prerogative. Class 4 Intelligence. So, I may have been a bit silly, but I really couldn't help myself. And now we have a new planet because I have uplifted some snakes. That's interesting. Why are you not a Biotrophy yet? There we go, now you are. And set rights, I would like you to have no population controls. And I'm essentially going to give you all three of these planets, because this is where you came from. We're here to help you, because we're the good guys. For once. Kind of. Kind of. Not really, but we're not evil. I just need a couple of robots on each. Just so I can have the bare essentials. Which means, of course, the main base, and then also one of these. Once I have the money for it. One of the nodes. Claims, claims everywhere. So, what we're going to do now, then, is go to war and pretty much kill you guys off. But first, let's invite some attackers. There we are. Our friends should be joining us again. Indeed they are, lovely. And let's just get straight in there. Our fleet should be able to defeat their station and their entire fleet together. And if we're lucky, they might just sort of derp up and head towards our fleet anyway. Happens from time to time. Fleet assets engage. They're going this way. 
Ah, okay, they're attacking our ally, which is actually fine by me. Well, this has been very, very one-sided. Now, sadly, our allies have some good claims in this area, including on that planet, which is very annoying, since I did really want their planets. But I'll live with it for now. We can always go to war with our former allies later. Construction Though complete. much, much later. They are stronger than us right now, which is terrifying. Every time I can, I am grabbing another system. The problem is, since we're at war, they are really, really expensive. Okay, so we just had some refugees, which instantly became um, bio-trophies. Sure. I mean, that's fine. Look how adorable they are. As soon as our hunter-killers are done with the population of this planet, I believe we are done. So, one last time, can I afford any more claims? Yes, I can. Um, yeah, I'll grab that one. Sadly, I can't afford the other one. So, it looks like our ally is going to take up most of this, except for this one planet. I'm going to take pretty much all of the systems over here, except for... Oh, wait, no, no, these are ours. It's just... They claimed it. No, they took it over. That's what happened. Okay, I see what's going on. These, on the other hand, yep, in order of strength, they have the stronger claim. Okay. The important thing is, this empire goes away. Ooh, battle frame army. Ooh, 5% fire rate. 5% fire rate. have achieved all objectives. The best outcome. There we are. Ooh, that's not good. Hmm. Friends? Are you still friendly with me? Yeah, border friction's pretty bad, isn't it? Um, We could give them this system. That would massively reduce border friction. Do not want to fight them. That's the thing, but we're as far as trust can take us. We're still on plus 10, but still, they are despoilers. So they might attack us, cause, just because they are that aggressive. I don't know what to do here. Well, for now, let's sort out these stations. Hello, trading station. We are making a little trading hub here just for you. Well, it's actually just because I want lots and lots of money, but we can pretend it's just for you, because we're friends. In fact, I wonder what strategic resource you have. Let's have a quick look-see. So you're the only traders I've found so far. Ah, can't even ask you until we're better friends. Um, in that case, I would like to trade for minerals. And at the moment, I have excess food, so here you go. Over time, we'll become friends, and then hopefully you'll give me something interesting. Now, I should mention, the reason why I really, really want that strategic resource is because of this. Where are you? There we are. Material analysis. Unity output increased by 5% per unique strategic resource, up to a maximum of 30%. Now, normally, I believe that's every Federation member gives you 5%, but because we have versatility rather than diplomacy, we have that instead. I believe that's what's happening there. I could very much be wrong. Could very much be wrong indeed. Okay, can't take that. Um, don't particularly want that, but I do want this system, and I do want this system. Is it worth it grabbing all that? Yeah, sure. For the economy. Oh, look, no, I was correct. The happiness did eventually occur. It just took a while to update. Okay, there we are. We're back to being bestest friends, which is great. They have been so useful to us. Now, these fellows down here, how much of a problem are these going to be? Oh, they're xenophobic isolationists. That's good for us because we can do this. Um, why can't I declare a rivalry? Because the game hasn't updated yet, so we'll have to reload the game, I suppose. No, because they're overwhelming. Never mind. Okay, that's horrific. Now, the reason why we could have made a rivalry with those and not be scared is because they are xenophobic isolationists, they have inwards perfection, which means they can't go to war with us even if they want to. 
This up in the difficulty is just utterly insane. I feel like this empire we have is stronger than most empires we've had in all of these playthroughs. We have almost all of the traditions. Our science is doing phenomenally. Our military is actually pretty good, so is our economy. And yet, we are so weak. Now, admittedly, we're so low down on the totem pole, mostly because of naval capacity. The naval capacity bonus they're getting is just utterly insane. And that really does throw us down. Now, these are definitely above us. So I would say we are most likely actually around here if you ignore navy capacity. But still... I just feel like I'm stuck. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. Now, thankfully, we are improving and we seem to be catching up. But even so, it is very difficult. And I love that. Right now, we're not massively aggressive with most of the galaxy. If we start bribing them, it wouldn't be difficult to get a trade deal, especially a research deal, which would then build up trust. Once we have trust, we could be allied with pretty much everyone except for the Fanatic Purifiers. Once again, the Geckos are indeed here. So, what's an easy way of doing this? Well, I was going to alter my species anyway, because right now, this is the current template we're using for the main group. Extra level cap, extra experience gain, and science. But recently, I've gotten more points. So, how about if we remove both of those, and we give them Emotion Emulators, plus 25 opinion to other empires. We can pretend to be human. Hello, fellow organics. And then we could remove the robot upkeep or lower the consumer goods cost. At the moment, minerals are more of an issue, so we could do durable. Don't really care about the rest, honestly. So, yeah, we could go durable, so they're a bit cheaper to run. Now, admittedly, robots don't cost all that much when it comes to their consumer goods cost, if we just go to our main world. How much do they cost? 0 0.3 minerals each. These guys cost 2. Well, 1.2 because of the reduction. Now, how much energy do they cost? If I just remove you for a second, so I build pop, and let's go with you. 0 0.8 energy each. But we're very good for energy right now. We have so many trading stations. Hmm. Not sure... Even though it's only a slight increase, I still think the minerals are probably the better option. Through the power of bribery, research agreements are made. Technological and through research agreements, a better future for the galaxy and all organic life. We're nice people, us robots. We are now able to harvest dark matter. Giving us a plus 10% modifier to our research speed. Lovely. We are now researching the Infinity Machine. Which is all the way over here. And we've had to really bribe these guys in order for them to simply not hate us. They are currently the strongest empire and I don't want to be killed by them. Yep, there they are. Lots of bribery. Now sadly, our current trade deal is a research deal, which is good. But it also is costing us 50 minerals a month. Because that's all they wanted. Yep. Worth it? Probably not. So apparently we're not just allowed to contact it, we have to do this one. Situation um, don't particularly want to do this, but let's try. How long is that going to take? Oh, it's going to take a very long time. A very long time indeed. At the moment, I am preparing for war with these fellows. It turns out our lovely despoiler neighbours are more than happy to go to war with them with us. So I am trying to get my fleet up and powerful. Meet the Seaborn, a cruiser we found at the bottom of an ocean. Problem is, it's quite slow, so adding it to any fleet will actually decrease the speed of the entire fleet. But it is a 1000 force count single craft, which is pretty nice. And apparently it's really bad versus shields. Maximum trade deal for, for minerals. We are going to war very, very soon because we really have to. Okay, all transport fleets, please get your butts over here. We're attacking over here since this is where I've made claims. We have a very strong bastion over here trying to defend from this angle. They will be able to break through it, but it will hurt them a lot if they do so. We caused the poor thing to self-destruct. 5% research speed, and we also got this which also increased our research speed by 5%, so it's actually a 10% increase because we've got that science. Uh, 
Well, that's just sad. Are those weapons? Can this thing actually fight? You know I've never actually attacked it. The option to attack it is an option, but I've never chosen that. That is heavily hinting that if you attack this thing, it will fight back quite powerfully. Yeah, that's just sad. Okay, I'm going to give this system to the frogs, because it's making them ups upset with us, just keeping it. And trading this will make them happier until we have enough trust that we can continue to be happy. So here you go. Here's Gargantua. You two return home. Yep, much happier now. Our first planet has been converted into a Gaia world. There we are. Beautiful. So that is giving us, I believe, yep, a 10% increase even to the machines. I think most of our worlds are now being converted. I think there's only a couple left. Yep, there we are. And the last one. Now all of the worlds are undergoing the conversion. Researching some pretty powerful things right now. The probability engine and the singularity core. One giving us plus 10% energy, one giving us plus 10% research, which is great. Successful. Well. Ooh, Mega Warform. Wow, that's powerful. Yes. I was going to say, oh look, extra fleet command or claim influence. That's really good, but no. Mega Warform. Definitely what we're going with. And now, we'll go to war with our neighbors once more. Come on, parrots. Let's have some fun. Diplomatic alert. War protocols initiated. Okay, go straight for the planet there. The landing parties are already being sent in. Thankfully, the planet is weak enough. We don't have to bother with bombarding it. This one, on the other hand, looks a lot stronger. So, more troops are on their way. Excellent. And our allies are indeed attacking them as well. Initiated. Fantastic. Let's have a quick look-see at what claims there are. So, I'm assuming... Yep, claiming that, 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 that. Okay, so what they're grabbing is just that section there. Okay, that's fine by us. I'll add more claims if it's looking like we will definitely win, and we can get more planets. What we need now is more mineral planets. We really do. More minerals, more energy. And I'm now very, very, very tempted to go for Voidborn. And then Master Builders, because that is an alternate win condition. It's not mega structures, but what it means is that we can continuously make very, very powerful habitats and then win via domination victory. These will also increase our science or increase our minerals and energy. Well, mostly minerals and energy. The reason is they do count as a colony, and thus the negative modifier to science is applied. If we add science to them, it does offset that, but it's still probably better to just go with pure economy. I've finally cleaned up just how many different templates we had for our machines. I've also now realized we have way too many organics. I did, of course, want the maximum servitor morale, but we have kind of gone a little bit overboard. So, in the future, new planets definitely need more machines. Domination tree is now finished. We have no more purpose for unity until we get ambitions. On the upside, we're going to be saving up so much. Once we do get ambitions, we're going to be having all of them on at once. So, now, 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 now comes a few questions. What do we want here, then? The safest option, because we've increased the difficulty of the end game crisis, is getting Defender of the Galaxy. It's just such a good one, and it will increase everyone's opinion of us, meaning we can do more research deals and become more powerful that way, which is nice. In fact, it's very nice. However, Voidborn gives us a win condition, which is also particularly good. Saving up for Galactic Wonders is also really, really good. I just want everything. I wish I didn't get Imperial Prerogative. Now, actually, no, no, I disagree with that because we are about to get more planets now and we're probably going to add more planets later and I do want direct control of them. 
Honestly, Synthetic Age was not needed. We now have excess machine modification points. So perhaps that was a bad choice. I really, really don't know what to pick. The fun option is going to be Voidborn and Galactic Wonders, in my opinion. But the smart option is definitely Defender of the Galaxy, so I just don't know. We could go Defender of the Galaxy Voidborn. But Voidborn plus Master Builders is fantastic because it means the habitats have three extra tiles each, which really, really adds up. Okay, we now have the ability to claim status quo. So, very quickly, can we make any last claims? I doubt it. We don't have enough money, really. Oh, actually over here, but they're already claimed by an unidentified empire? What? So, not our allies then, that's the important thing. I mean, that's fine by me. I'll just grab one then. Okay. I demand status quo. Technological acquisition successful. Beautiful. Took a nice chunk of their empire. They were really, really scary, I've got to say. Thankfully, they had to split up. Our parrot allies have been so useful. They really have. Let's grab that. Brand new planets. How lovely. Wow, I need minerals. <laughs> I can't even build my robots. Let's go with this. The Spinal Mount, which means we can have the Mega Cannon. Oh yeah, that's going to be so, so fun to watch. We have loads of energy to spare on a side note. Um, why do I not have... I don't have the shield capacitors to increase our shields? Really? I never got that. Well, that's kind of rubbish. There we are. Chance to hit. Heavily increased. I mean, we could go for afterburners, but I really need that for battleships. Although, saying that, the battleship is the slowest part of the fleet, and the slowest part of the fleet dictates how fast your fleet actually moves. So, yeah, using the terrible afterburners we have will certainly improve our speed. Sure, then. Let's do that. Okay, sticking with the terrible armor. Although we have good tech, it seems like we focus on a few specific things, and none of them really military. Also, you should definitely be in artillery mode. There we go. Our cannon is being upgraded. That's going to be beautiful. That's so beautiful. So many awesome things. Thank you, isolationists. You truly have been more beneficial than you will ever know. Well, until we fire these missiles at you, then you'll probably know that, oh, we've been beneficial to our enemies. That isn't good. More worlds are now Gaia worlds. Truly beautiful. You see, if we took over the galaxy, which we will, eventually, maybe, perhaps, every world would be paradise. Organic populations would have mandatory pampering, truly a life of bliss and happiness and joy, and no freedoms at all. No need to think. No need to do anything. Just let us take control. We love you. You guys like us. Like, really like us. Do not feel too bad if your empire falls apart. That seems to be the most common outcome for young civilizations such as yours. We've got a fallen empire. Oh no. You're fanatic xenophile. They're rivals. Oh no, that means a war in heaven is an option. I hate the war in heaven. And we're closest to the militant isolationists. Oh god, we very quickly need to up our game. We need to kill these so quickly. Do not allow them both to wake up. Because if they go to war, we are going to be caught in the crossfire, and most likely we're going to have to side with these guys, which I really don't want to do. Now, you are more than happy to do trades, right? Because, no. Darn, I thought they used to be quite good for trades. Well, obviously they're not going to give us a research agreement. Yeah, Fallen Empires will never trade research agreements. Darn. Well, at least they like us. Which means they may occasionally give us gifts, at least. I really wish I found these guys earlier. Speak, bot. Oh, I thought you'd like to. Be nicer. 
You sound far too cute for being something which is so evil. Shield capacitors, there we go. Okay, so what are we doing next? I honestly don't know. So, um, we're upgrading the stations around here so that we can start having more trade hubs. Other than that, I guess we're just waiting around and upgrading what we've got. As soon as we can go to war, we will most likely go back to war with these guys again. Probably going to try and take this section since it'll be very easy to defend. If we turn this into a bastion, we can even hold off here and take all of this. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Custodian, your species is a most worthwhile addition to the galactic community. As a token of our esteem, we have decided to bestow on you a generous gift of valuable minerals and resources. I mean, I expected more from that, like, speech, but thank you. Thank you very much, plenty people. We will still happily accept these, because I am adding more to our fleet. Why am I not using Fleet Manager? Okay, so, normally, I don't use Fleet Manager because if we go with Corvette Spam, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. But since we're actually balancing our fleets right now with battleships, cruisers, destroyers, corvettes, potatoes, waffles, and irons, I would very much like to use Fleet Manager. So, let's sort that out finally. Ta-da! Okay, first of all, merge these two. After that, we'll use Fleet Manager, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's good. See, we say disconcerting. No, this is good. So, our friends have just embraced cybernetics. That means they may become synthetic one day, which will give them a plus happiness to us, because we are a fellow machine empire. That's fine. I doubt that'll make them happier right now. No, sadly not. But it, perhaps in the future, that will make them a little bit happier with us, because I do want to stay their friends. We can use our unity for things. We now have ambitions. So, first of all, scientific revolution. This will give us bonus research speed. And then I'm going to grab this, giving us bonus 33% mineral production. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Next up, when we can afford it, I will grab a grand fleet, making our ships cheaper. Suddenly, unity is looking really good again. So here's something. It turns out, after consulting a friend of mine, that executive vigor also affects ambitions. That's so powerful. It means these will last, I think, up to 19 months? Something like that anyway. Sorry, 19 months. 19 years, rather than just 14. That really does mean we can have way more of them online at any given time. Also, apparently, I've just upgraded my ability to produce energy, which is nice as well. No! Random loss! I think that's the first, no, the second we've we've lost a unit this whole playthrough. A ceased functioning due to a miscalibrated exoskeleton applicator exerting 2,984 2, times the necessary force. Well, whoops-a-doodle. We need a new leader. Um, oh, that's good right there. Welcome aboard. Now creating the Mega Warforms. A single colossal warform towers over the battlefield, and its massed firepower exceeds that of most armies. Bringing one of these behemoths down is extremely difficult. That's just glorious. However, that collateral damage is vile. 400%. Yeah, that's gonna really hurt the worlds we attack. Which isn't good, considering we do want to use them. Ooh, I want all of this. Um, I'm thinking... I'm tempted by Fleet Command, because our Admirals are getting very, very powerful, so I do want them all to be in one fleet if possible. It sounds silly, because this is so good, but yeah, maybe just Fleet Command. Now building the Singularity Core, giving us a 5% increase to our research speed. Our research is not as powerful as it has been in previous playthroughs, but we're actually doing okay. Mostly because I have used every single science style to be science. There we are. That's going to take a while though. But it will be worth it. Now swapping over to use a few strike craft and to start using a bit of point defense. It turns out that our enemies both use a lot of missiles. So this is a good mid-ground. We have point defense and we have something which deals with shields and armor pretty darn well. Somehow, I only had rank 2 mining networks all this time. Only now do I have rank 3. 
No wonder I was so far behind with minerals. Ship augmentation. How did completed. that even happen? Ship augmentations completed. Well, on the other upside, now we've got this, we also Ship are now creating the Titan Yards over in our main shipyard, which means soon we're going to have Titans in our fleets, which is going to be glorious. So I'm waiting until then, then we're going to war again. We're actually finally climbing the ladder. Our fleet power is now really getting there. Acquisition successful. Glorious. We can now make mega structures. Well, we can restore them anyway. Which means, if we go into here, we can now do this. Where are you? There we are, Galactic Wonders. We can make our own versions. Oh, that's going to be so fantastic. Okay, so where are our construction vessels? One way down here, one way over there. You know what? I'll just make a new one because that's going to take too long. So, what are we going to build first? I don't know, Lathrix. What are you going to build first? Well... We are currently making titans, so soon we will be at war, which is good, so we should get more money soon as well. But what do I really want to build? I think what I'm going to build first is a ring world. Because we are custodians! We are the broken custodian fallen empire. Except for not broken. We're functional, you see. I want all of these things, but yeah, ring world first, definitely. It's also one of the cheaper ones. Ooh, speaking of which, if we go over here, Ambition, Architectural Renaissance. Yep, that will allow us to build the megastructure faster. Let's do that as well. And as soon as we have the money, any second now, there we go. Let's bring the ring world into this galaxy. Oh no. Oh no, it's you guys. You're inferior to us, because you're at war, and you're not doing too well. You do have some nice systems there, bud. Be a shame if someone were to attack you. Oh, we could so totally... Oh, we could kick them while they're down. But I'm kind of also building up forces, because I really, really, really want to kill this fallen empire. In fact, I'm tempted to grab... Where are you? Oh, I want all of these things. But I'm very tempted to grab Galactic Contender rather than... Where are you? Defender of the Galaxy. We could also just get a Colossus. I don't know. There are too many things I really want. We have gone way over our naval capacity and it's starting to really hurt us now. But look! Titans! Yeah, we need to go to war soon. <laughs> look at our energy. It's just about clinging in there. That's with all the bonuses we have. That's with, where are we? A grand fleet making our ships cheaper to keep. We have capacity overload going, all that other stuff. And we are just, just about hanging in there. Okay, lads. Let's, um, let's get ready to crush the Empire down here, shall we? So, I've made two mistakes with our Titan. Oh, also I have declared war now with our allies, huzzah for that. First of all, the advanced afterburners, although they do give us some evasion, not really worth it since the battleships are still slower, meaning that we haven't really increased the speed of the fleet. Secondly, I have a single cloud lightning. I have no idea why I put that there. Anyway, let's begin. So, you two are going to stick together. Their forces are all over there, so what we're going to do is you two... Make sure you're always together. You can go by yourself in this direction. And then you guys can fuse. And you're going to go with that. The rest of the transports are going with the main armadas. Have fun dealing with both of us when either of us are stronger than you. And we have Strikecraft. I love Strikecraft. Crystal fleet assets engaged. Strikecraft and really, really big cannons. Oh, good, a fleet battle. Oh, this is not going to be in your favor. Oh, look, there are the mega cannons. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, 
Oh, that is just gorgeous. Um, do I want to split these two fleets? We could. Though, if all of their fleets attack one of our fleets, we will lose it. It's just too expensive to do so. That is beautiful. Okay, Corvettes now going to attack. The large cannons are firing. Now in range. I'm just waiting for the Titan to fire. Oh, the cannon hits are so devastating. There's the single cloud lightning going off. The little bit of point defense doing really well. Look at those missiles being stopped so far away. Maybe we should give our destroyers some point defense as well. Give them a use. Why are all of our strike craft so far away? Ah, look at Lance. Laser ants. There's the Titan shot. And there's the other Titan shot as well. Lovely. Look how strong our landing fleet is. I doubt we are ever going to have to bombard anything if we don't want to. Yep. Oh, look, a thousand strength. Too bad. Mega Warforms. Complete. Round invasion units have achieved all objectives. Well, at least doing some damage of our Bastion. Eventually, they'll have to come back. There's the thing. Our forces are far too strong in this area. They will eventually need to defend their territory, otherwise they're just going to lose everything. This is their main fleet. Oh, I love those cannons so much! They just rip apart shields. It seems like they're really going for anti-hull. No, they're actually quite balanced. Never mind. I saw quite a few anti-armor, anti-hull things, but no, actually they are more balanced than I first thought. Don't you dare hurt my titan. Uh, yes, please. Burn, baby burn. And that was that. Lovely. Alert. Spaceport engaged. It begins. All of our money just went into it, but in the long term, this will be so, so worth it. It's just going to be a while. A long while. Do I still have the bonus currently going? Yes, I do. That's with the bonus speed. Oh, it's such a slow build. Planetary invasion alert. Surface control has been compromised. Ground invasion units have achieved all objectives. After this fight, most likely I'm just going to accept status quo. So, we have all of this chunk here, we have all of this pathway, all this climbed. We did not get those two worlds because, honestly, the enemy is still very strong. It's not like they're weak. Uh, at one point, they had two 50,000 fleets, which we ended up destroying and then almost being destroyed ourselves. Hence why now I'm way under the naval limit. Um, we, we have climbed all of this, including the planets. We're currently getting these. I could wait a little bit longer and just allow this fellow to grab all of this. I can also grab these two quite easily. Okay, so not quite yet status quo, but very, very soon. Depends where these guys are going. Okay, they're going to continue to get back these worlds, which is fine. Okay, let's continue then. Looks like we're going to be getting habitats after all. Just not ours. Okay, now we are done. Just one last check to make sure we grabbed everything we wanted to. We didn't get that, but that's fine. Be easy enough to grab afterwards next time. 
The reason why I want to stop here is because our allies have claims on the enemy's capital. I want the capital myself. And I can't claim it whilst we're at war like this. So what I need to do is claim it outside of war and then get it ourselves. The problem is then they are going to have a claim on one of our territories, which they simply aren't going to like. I think this is the last time we're ever going to be truly allied with our neighbours. After this, the border friction is going to be worse and we're both going to have claims on each other. Essentially, we need to get ready for war versus our long-lasting allies, which is kind of a shame, really. Lag? We'll accept this for now. Wow. Look at that. So, they still have this little area here, which is kind of annoying because of this corner, but that's fine. We can still get around. Good. Now, they should be inferior to us, right? Good. That means what we can do is we can turn them into a tributary. So, next time we go to war, we'll turn them into a tributary or a vassal. Let's pay attention to this because this might update soon. Okay, everyone um, go home, though. It's time to continue. And I need to really deal with all our planets because we have way too many. And so I need to make a sector. So I'm feeding the sector quite a lot of minerals. I've set up farms manually on a lot of the planets. Um, it's doing its job. It's doing loads of stuff. What else do we need to do? Uh, well, we need to stop starving. So what we're going to do is quickly pop on over to the traders. So end our current resource deal, which is a shame because that's minerals. And what I'm going to do is, for energy, I am going to purchase food. It's going to be a while until everything's up and running as it was, but still. Yeah, that's fantastic. Just look at that. The amount of space we've got now, that's going to be amazing once everything's built up. Okay. Just need to um, get back to what I was doing. So, how is the ring world coming along? Still going to be forever, but still. Hello. My name is Station. What I really need to do now is build up our forces, because I really, really, really need to take out this fallen empire. Not only will it give us more tech for the best shields and armor and all that good stuff, but also it's going to be just really useful. Oh. There's a raiding fleet against us, apparently. I did not know that. I'm already turning you into a Gaia world, right? Good. Okay. But yeah, we need to take these guys out, is what I was trying to say. They have some really fantastic worlds as well, so I also want those. That's our next goal. The ring world is complete, but now, of course, we need to build the sections, which are going to be very, very expensive. So do I save up, or do I continue to improve our fleet? It's a difficult question. Two of our fleets currently fighting off versus one of the fallen empires. The third one finally warped in. Lovely. Do we still have all three titans? That's very important because that's how we're going to heal. Now, we didn't kill all that many of them because sadly that's just not how it works normally, but still. Okay, all stick together, please. Let's try and get the second fleet. Technological acquisition successful. Lovely, more mining networks. And I'm going to grab... You. Much better. So this time, not only did we start all together, but we also had the range advantage. Because of our titans, we are very, very good at long range. Lovely. Construction complete. This is going to seem so odd, but now we are doing status quo. Come on, accept it. There we are. Now, the reason for that is twofold. First of all, I don't like my odds after all that damage we've taken versus their station. So I'm going to return all of my fleets back to base to reinforce again. Secondly, the main reason to fight a fallen empire, although the worlds are truly amazing, it isn't actually for the planets. It's for the research. Grabbing these will give us some really amazing research options which will massively improve our fleets. Look at all those options. 
For the first time in a very long time, capacity overload managed to simply turn off. Come on, one more month. There we are, back on. Chaotic, disorganized, woefully unwashed. You are a prime example of the need for extreme organic caretaking protocols. So there. So I've went ahead now and I've added a second type of Colossus, a second type of Titan I should say. Sadly we don't actually have Colossi. So this is the Snare. The Snare is using the Subspace Snare, I know, a really original name there, because this way it massively decreases the chance of the enemy jumping away during combat, so more of their ships will be destroyed rather than just respawning back at their base. We're going to crush them. Technological acquisition success. Armor improved, and now the reactor as well. Go on, give me that first. Come on. And he's dying now. Technological acquisition successful. Beautiful. Ah, oh, here you go. The first habitable section is now completed. So now we need to save up again. Diplomatic alert. War protocols initiated. You really don't have a chance, you know? Our forces are so much stronger than last time. And they have so much less. Oh, there's their fleet. Oh, look at all those kinetic shots! Half our fleet is just ignoring them. Maybe go for the station and not the transports, so that might be better. Thank you. The shields are gone already, that was just obliterated. Yeah, we need some more anti-armor and anti-hull now. Well, anti-hull we do have, thankfully the, the kinetics are also anti-hull. But we do need more anti-armor. And that was it. That was the entire battle. So, the core probably will need to be bombarded sadly, even though we do have the mega forms here. A little bit annoying, but still. We can definitely take Boundary, though, so you go and do that. You fellas, um, the strongest ones stay here and defend the area and, and begin bombardment. The other two stick together and go for the closest world. A machine uprising. Wow, you took a lot of their space, like, instantly. Huh, strongest empire in the game. Love us. Did not expect that to be your audio. <laughs> Custodian, let us snicker behind the organics' backs. It makes them paranoid. <laughs> okay, that, that, that made me laugh way too much. Um, what's your tech like? Equivalent. So, would you like um, a research agreement? I'm assuming you're, you're going to need stuff since you're a brand new empire, so here's some minerals. And here's some energy. May your war effort be fruitful. Their last station. Though it did really hurt us to do that. I believe I've lost one of my titans. Yeah, I definitely have. That's annoying, to say the least. Um, that's very weak for how many you have. What? You're out of energy. You can't sustain your fleet. So what happens then if I gift you loads of energy and loads of minerals so your war goes better? Nope, seems to not have affected it. Then I don't really know what's going on there. Ship fragments dissected. Maybe it's because of their navy capacity can't handle it either. I mean, look how many they have. Well, they, they did okay to begin with. Hopefully they can keep what they've taken. Now 
Now here's something annoying. So this world is amazing. It's so, so rich. It'll generate loads of minerals and loads of energy for us. But if we have these fellows on it, what's going to happen is that they're just going to generate unity and nothing else. So what I'll need to do is when we have the next ring world, I'll move all of these onto the ring world and treat it like a zoo for the fallen empire. Just completely fill it full of these and then that's done and then we can move our machines in. The best possible outcome. The end of the fallen empire. Ship fragments dissected. Beautiful. Okay, let's get rid of all of you fellows. Because we're going to move all of those fallen empire chaps over to here. I wish there was a mass cancel. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so. The core. Resettle. Everyone except for one. Only one can stay. That way we don't lose the um, colony. Here's something I really should have done earlier. Build cost reduced. No, not build cost. We don't really care about that. There we go. Speed up how fast we can build them. This will be called Drone... Drone 2. Good enough. And Drone 2 will be placed all over the place in the core. Oh my god. So, what's happened is that when these turned into biotrophies, they instantly destroyed the building they were on because they instantly built the organic paradise. That happened automatically and instantly. So there is no point in moving them. We've still got some left, but yeah, that was... <laughs> Oh my god, so much money just got wasted. But there was nothing I could have done there to stop that. It was all it was all automated. Oh, accidentally gave them build cost and build speed rather than consumer goods. I'm okay with that. The ring world is finally taking shape. And at least it's making me lots and lots of unity. Now, thanks to this cloud calculations, we would very much like you fellows to be our tributary. So, you demand tribute like I just did, and you will say no, and you will say no, thank you. And after saying no, we are going to make you accept it anyway. Protocols initiated. Wait, why do we have loads of transport vehicles and not a major one? What did I do? What did I do? Here's the problem. I have just came back to the game now. This is the third day of recording. And I can't remember what I did. Oh, I've moved all the transport fleets. Okay, I remember the dumb dumb which I did. Oh, just ran away. I was hoping we fired. Oh, all of your armor, all of your shields. Goodbye. I love Titans. I know for their point value, they're not that strong, there's the thing. But they're just so fun. Oh good, they turned back around. Oh, they have a titan. Where is your titan, my bob? Is that your titan? Oh, it's so weird looking. Oh, yep, yeah, there goes everything. Well, goodbye to you. And let's begin bombardment. Not that we probably need to, but... Oh, uh, yeah, we definitely don't. Okay, in that case, we're just going to invade. This is what I call overkill. Same goes for that. But not this one. Communications alert. Whoa, my frames. They're gone. That poor titan's been beat back so many times. And it's escaped every time as well. Did I mention that I just love these cannons? Diplomatic alert. 
military confidence. And that was very, very easy. Achieve war goals. War has ended. Well done. You are now our tributary. And we'll pretty much leave you in peace now. So feel free to continue to be the isolationist you were born to be. But what I'm going to do next, since we have our forces down here anyway, is deal with these fanatic purifiers. Then we can consider if we want to kill these fellows, the observers. Even though they do really like us, they have inferior fleet power. Yeah, it would be nice to claim another area. Observe pure death. That's their entire fleet, by the way. Or is that their transports? Okay, so they sent their transports first. I mean, still pure death. Just kinetic shots, kinetic shots everywhere. Did you just... Yep, you turned around. You sent your transports, and then you turned around. Nice. Really nice. Now it's their fleet. And so the fleet is about to move out to attack our former allies. There's now a fourth in terms of our fleet, so yeah, they are not going to stand a chance. Fleet power, pathetic. Yep. The ring world is completed. There we are. All four pieces are now completely done. So, let's colonize the last section. So, I've just noticed my sectors are producing a ridiculous amount of food. The reason is I've set them all to respect the tiles of their planets, which means if there's minerals on a tile, you build a mineral production building, anything which produces minerals. If there's food, you produce a farm. And well, our farms are very, very powerful, and well, that's gone a bit over the top. So I might change their settings so they will not always focus on that. The problem is, then they can build really weird things sometimes. I mean, for the time being, at least I can just trade the food in for some more minerals. Sadly, I can't trade food with other people, purely because we are the robot empire. As you can see, it's not an option. I've just learned something. You can apparently build multiple ring worlds. That is really cool. But for now, though, I want to build the science nexus. We are getting a little bit far behind on science, and it would be really nice to have this. So, there we are. Construct. Oh! So, you are from one of my... That's really weird. For some reason, one of my sectors is sending the colony ship, even though it's not in their sector. Fine. As long as it works, I don't really mind. Okay, so I just checked the footage. So what happened was I selected a colony ship which was already made by one of my sectors. I thought I just selected the first planet, which is normally the planet right here. So that's where all the confusion occurred. And really, you're going to try and raid me? I mean, sure. You'll end up dying to one of the stations somewhere. We have made claims for this entire section here, including these three planets, this planet over here, and I think this one? No, not this one. Although we could claim it if things go very, very well, which honestly they should. We massively outnumber them in terms of force count. One of our fleets is almost comparable to their entire Hostile fighting force. Asset engaged. Alert. Spaceport engaged. The Science Nexus begins construction of its first functional level. Established. Having a 5,000 strength ground force is pretty good, especially when it's made up almost entirely of the Mega Warframes, which are just so difficult to kill. They have so much health per one, Planetary they just survive each fight. Protocols. So Industry. less and less force count actually gets reduced. Uh, can you defeat that station? No, you can't. In that case, I don't really mind. 
the best possible outcome. Now sadly, I was about to try and make a claim there. I was saving up for it, but they surrendered a little bit too early. So that's kind of squished them up against the very center of the galaxy and isolated this one section over here. We also took their old capital, which is fairly nice. I've just realized the mid-game event still hasn't occurred. That's just bizarre. Marauders have killed and enslaved our biotrophies for far too long. Their life is forfeit. Well, that's faster than expected. Behold the glory of the science nexus. Let's continue, shall we? There we are, finally the mid-game event. The drums of war. So, that'll be the only raider section left, which is all the way over here. A new threat is born. Now here's the question. With the increased difficulty, does that also increase the power of... Nope, no it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Look how low they are! Oh, I did not know that. Okay, so if I knew that the mid-game didn't stack with difficulty, maybe it does. To be fair, these rapidly gain power after they start, but if they don't stack with the difficulty of the game, I would have made the mid-game earlier. I was thinking about this last night. It was a little bit weird. Well, here's hoping you get stronger. Well, on the upside, though, of course, we have almost a double strength endgame crisis heading our way, so that will be very fun. That's in 70 plus years. I also feel like that was a bit too far away, but I wanted a long game for once. For 100 influence, I get 23,000 minerals and 14,000 energy. Oh, okay, go on then. If you insist. And so begins the war with the most powerful empire in the entire galaxy. I'm working on my sarcasm emulators. Diplomatic alert. I need a little bit more mineral production. I can't quite afford the science nexus and I have everything running right now except for, I believe, one of the ambitions for minerals. Yet yeah, that one isn't online, everything else is though. So this is how much I can basically afford. I can just about have four permanently on with a little bit of off time for one of them. It's very close. And it does depend on what sciences we're currently researching. If we're doing the big repeatable researches, I can do less. But if we're doing some of the smaller ones, because each time we get a tech, we get three months worth of unity, then it's quite easy to have all of those on all the time. Okay, one of you go there. The rest of you will stick together and continue forwards. Straight into that planet there. So this is the sector I'm going for. I really want to end it here because this is a good choke point or here. It depends on how much influence I'm going to have by the end. I do have the bonus influence currently going, will to power, which costs a fortune but gives us plus five influence on top of our already very, very good influence generation. But even that, it's so expensive to make climbs. Here's something interesting, which I didn't know until literally just now, to do with the jump drives. I just jumped this transport fleet into this position from here, and then took over the first habitat of this system. I won the fight, and now the jump is already off cooldown. I'm going to do this again, just to prove to myself this is actually what happened, but it seems like after a fight, because this is reforming, it automatically resets the jump. I didn't even know that. I don't know how I didn't know that. Perhaps I just thought I was getting lucky a lot with the jump, but that's a good bit of information to know. Okay, the jump is now on cooldown, and it is on cooldown for 180 days. Well, actually above that, but still. This definitely won't last 180 days, and we'll see what happens. Okay, going in with 160 almost on the dot left. 155. Planetary pacification protocol. I'm now watching the time in the top right, and let's see what happens once the fight is over. Face the wrath of the war forms. One of which I've nicknamed Liberty Prime. Which is weird considering we are robotics. Okay. All objectives. And the jumpers reset. Yep, so that definitely happens. 
Let's continue forward. So far, I haven't actually seen their fleet. The death of the Great Khan. Well, they've taken quite a bit of space, but yeah, their battle groups are still only 17,000. Now, there's probably quite a few of them, and that's probably why they are succeeding. Because they're just overwhelming all the systems by attacking multiple at once. And they definitely did some damage to this one particular empire, but not that much. Ooh, look. There's their fleets. Yeah, that's nowhere near powerful enough to really threaten me. And I didn't even realise this, but apparently they're at war. I'm being very mean. Good. Because they're being very mean. One shot, one kill. That's lots of missiles, and we have little to no point defense, actually. Thankfully, we have overwhelming force here. Okay, this should be enough to most likely force status quo once they're finished. Can we claim anything we've grabbed? We could, we could grab that, but we need to grab all these anyway. Try and save up for that or that, really. Ooh, one more month, I can grab this. That's good. Yep, I can now have status quo. And remember, making claims is more expensive during war. It's cheaper when you're at peace. Hence why I don't want to just wait around, so grab that. And there we are. Lovely. And so, there is a new empire, which was originally the Marauders. Like I said before, whilst we're doing the repeatable sciences, I just need to wait. And we can just about have the next one of these up in just one more month. Come on, one more month, which is ten days away. There we go. And that will speed up the build of this. Once this is done, I'm either building yet another ring world, or I'm building myself a Dyson Sphere, giving me essentially unlimited energy. The Science Nexus is finished. There we are, 225 of each science now being added to our pool. Lovely. So what next then? Do we build a new ring world or what? What do we actually do? All of our ring world chunks are slowly filling up with machines. I think A might actually be finished. Yep, there it is. Oh, though of course, that kind of cheated. Let's have a look at B. B is finished as well. Good. And that's producing a lot of energy and minerals. Yes, indeed it is. Along with a little bit of research and a little bit of unity, which is always nice. Overall, making the system worth an absolute fortune when you add them all up. So what do I do then? I think I am indeed going to build a new ring world. And there's several reasons. First of all, because, well, lots of output. But also, for the first time in a long time, we are not on maximum morale. Which isn't particularly good. So I can build some farms again. In fact, this entire ring world is going to be one giant farm because I think it's going to be funny. So let's put that down. There we are. And each and every section is going to be a different species with a couple of curators, a couple of custodians to take care of them, but for the most part it's just going to be loads upon loads of unity. For fun. Okay, going to war yet again. I've got to be honest, I think making the game so long was a mistake. I am just waiting around quite a lot now. There is very little else for me to do in terms of micromanagement. I think one thing I really should have done I shouldn't have got Defender of the Galaxy, I only chose it because I was a little bit nervous, shouldn't have done that, definitely shouldn't have got Synthetic Age, definitely should have got Master Builders, which, which would speed up how fast we make our Galactic Wonders, and we should have also been able to build Habitats. Doing these two would have probably gave us Domination Victory already, but it have, would have gave me more to do. I've definitely hit that point where I've steamrolled, I'm winning everything, and there's not that much to do. Still, really interesting empire. Still, the only bit of micromanagement I've got right now is sorting out the morale, because it's kind of... Well, I started building too many robots. 
Soon, though, we will have the ring world, and the ring world will be the bestest zoo you ever did done see. Okay, grabbing all of those, uh, let's stop at the wormhole. Oh, no, I can continue further forward. That's good. Can I grab both of these? No, in that case, let's grab that one. Okay, that'll be good. That'll make sure we can make cheap claims everywhere, and next time we should be able to take all of this over. <laughs> Declare war. Conquer. Systematic alert. War protocols initiated. Ooh, they're all bunched up. That's good. All of you, get there. No frames per second. Communications alert. Sure. I like money, even though I'm about to hit my cap again with minerals. Yeah, really should have just went with the habitat building. We could have had so many habitats. With the amount of influence we're gaining, we could easily have maybe four habitats on the go all the time. You live and you learn. Still, though, I have to say, this may be my favourite empire type of all the different empire types I've played so far. What are you doing? You clearly don't need to bombard that. Just move forwards. You have a 6,000 fleet here just waiting to land and crush all life from the planet. But yet, despite all this at the end, I do think this might be my all-time favourite empire. I, I feel like it's, it's incredibly flexible. You can play tall or wide if you want to, and the whole micromanagement with the organics is just so unique. The best possible outcome once again, and now this is what the galaxy looks like. We're kind of just spilling over into this territory, aren't we? So what I should really do is, rather than wait until the truce simply um, ends, is go to war with other empires whilst I'm waiting. Thankfully, we are very close right now. We could easily make some claims here, as soon as we have the influence, and then all that will be ours. We are now still only high in morale. Yeah, we definitely need some more organics. Oh, no, we're now max. Now it's updated. That's lovely. But first, what I need to do is go into here and let's give this system a load more planets and by system i meant to say sector you can have everything here that's fine by me hello there a new set of driven assimilators we're apparently at war with now i know for a fact you're going to go quite weak quite soon why are we at war with you exactly because you had an uprising with one of our minions. Wow, you want, like, everything. So, obviously, that's not going to be a thing. Um, you're going to be really strong for a while. Then you're going to get incredibly, incredibly weak. So, let's wait a while for you to starve yourself, basically. Already looks like it's happening. For 20 battleships, only 44k... Yeah, that is really weak for the amount of um, fleet you have. The problem is, my fleets are miles away. So, start heading down there. By the time you get there, they should be just so weak you can win against them. Just passively. Yeah, so this is their, f their entire fleet. As you can tell, it, it can do no damage. The problem is, it does have regular health still. Communications just less right. armor and less shield. So, it's going to be a drawn-out fight, but one we just can't lose. So, I fought them all the way back. They have two planets claimed, and the reason is I actually want them to stay around. They really like us, even though we are currently at war. So, as soon as the war's over, I want to make them our protectorate, our first and probably only protectorate of the entire game. Because they're robots who are bullied. And I'm a robot. And I like them. So, whilst this is going on, I'm just kind of chilling there until the war exhaustion finally ends the war. It's time to um, hunt some parrots and make them pets. I mean, happy people, parrot birds. So far, this has been a very, very easy war indeed. Absolutely no real resistance. They had one fleet of 40,000, which rapidly got melted by about 400,000 plus worth of fleet power on my side. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the most difficult thing in the universe. Planetary there classification we are. Protocols now, is that ring world done yet? At least the first stage. It must be soon. 
Oh, well, apparently I'm psychic. There we go. Ah, let's begin construction. Also, jump drives purely just for the transports is amazing. Planet. I'll be taking this system, thank you very much, and I believe that is Achieve War Goals. And so, is that the end of the parrots? That's the end of the parrots. Look at that, just... It kind of looks like a rhino. So here's the ear, then there's a weird horn. Yeah, it kind of does. I can't tell. Does this planet need some upgrades? Hmm... Okay, I can make the Nexus either our vassal or tributary, and they will accept. Um, the thing is, I don't want them to fight with us, so I will make them tributaries. Because that's just the easiest way to do this. So, there we are. I allowed them to keep the worlds they gained, and I think that's perfectly fine. And they are loyal. Excellent. Just to make my life easier, I'm going to demand tribute instead, and I'm going to release all these claims. This way we don't have to keep on going to war over and over again, taking small section after small section. We can just go to war with the whole thing in general, and, well, that'll make life a lot easier for me. Now, of course, we still need to wait a little while longer. Really? That war was that quick? Yep, we still need to wait a while. Annoyingly, just before I was about to go to war, they declared war on someone else, and you can't demand tribute if they are at war. That was very, very annoying. So now complete. we're going all the way back home to this wormhole over here, because I'm going to declare war on these fellows. Now, these actually quite like us, but I... well, we really like them, and we want them to have the best lives possible. So I'm going to teleport in, bombard their planets, take them hostage, uh, take them on a field trip, and then they're going to live in paradise for the rest of their lives. I don't get a choice in it, mind. We are now at war with the Sovereign Worlds. Oh yeah, Federation fleets. Did not think about that. Kind of just... Zerg rushed in here thinking, oh, it'll be fine. They, they say that they're inferior in terms of fleet power. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Thankfully, it seems like we're okay, but should have really paid more attention to that. This is going to be a while. Now, the game is starting to, to chug a little bit. It's definitely slowing down. This is one of the reasons why I've semi-abandoned one of my other Let's Plays, which is the infestation, because it's got to the point where it's rare for me to have more than 10 frames per second when at normal or fast-forwarded speeds, which makes playing the game kind of horrendous. But still, we're almost at the end now. The end game begins in 2525, and after 50 years, that's when the end game crises should be able to occur. I believe that's how that works. I could be very much wrong. Okay, transport vessel number one. You're going with these fellows, and let's start causing some chaos. The Federation fleet once again. I think this really shows the level of tech between us at the moment. Actually, no, they have some really good stuff. It's just... Well, they have 17 battleships, 10 cruisers, 20 destroyers, and 21 corvettes. We have far less than this fleet, but our fleet is more powerful. Ooh, and more army damage is very, very welcomed. Oi, you hurt one of my battleships. Ooh, they might win, though. They very well might win. We're about to lose a fleet, I feel. I thought I had two fleets there, but no, I have two fleets here. Darn, I wasn't paying attention. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, and sometimes explosive. Yeah, I think I did indeed lose. No, nope, no, nope, the fleet's still there. Never mind. It's going to be close. But I think they are going to win. I can't retreat. Now I can, but I'm going to... Oh, I know why, because I jumped with this fleet! Did I? I think I did. 
Darn, so glad. Oh, and there we go, reinforcements. Yep, we may as well run now. Darn. Well, good to know they can still put up a fight. Well, despite a very good effort on our opponent's behalf, and perhaps my um, lack of attention in several occasions there, achieve war goals. Welcome to the team. You are now our subject, and that's one Federation member no longer, well, part of the Federation. Which means their Federation fleet is going to be significantly weakened. Now, who will be next for that? Well, we have to figure out who can we actually demand tribute from, is the question. I really wish these guys were a bit weaker, so we could. Sadly, we can't. You guys are still at war, which is really annoying. You are kind of friendly with... Same with you. Yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to have to get back and reinforce. Here we are. We now have the zoo. So, let's start populating it. Number one is going to be just the adorable little butterflies. In addition to that, what am I going to want? Well, I definitely want the Omplig node. And... I know there's something else I definitely want, but what is it? No, that's really kind of it, just the uplink node and then maybe the spare parts depot, but we're not actually going to make anything else, to be perfectly honest, so not too sure. So after that last tributary, our economy is going a little bit insane. So our fleet is also going a little bit insane. I am not scared in the slightest about any endgame event at the moment. <laughs> And I've just made a lot of claims, hence why now I have almost no influence on our neighbours down here. In fact, this whole section is now claimed, and most likely it won't be a war which takes too long. Although they are keeping up with us in terms of naval capacity and technology, their fleet is pathetic. We've got to the steamroll stage now, and well, we are just kind of steamrolling. Well, I'm about to say something which I think is going to upset quite a few people, including myself. I am calling the episode here. I am counting this as a victory, and I am ending the game. And this is because, even with the increase to difficulty, there is no way that any endgame crisis is going to beat us. Remember, it's going to be another 100 years before the endgame crisis actually occurs, and it's just not going to beat us. Even some of the more difficult ones, which can only spawn even later than that, it just won't be a true challenge. And right now, the game has slowed down to a crawl because of everything which is going on. I did restart the game and change the graphics, which I've now changed back. I changed everything I could, but the game is running incredibly slowly. And so this would take maybe another seven, eight hours of gameplay, which I'm just not willing to do. So rather than just slug that out and just have an inferior last bit of the video, I think we can claim victory. Truly, truly, this has been my favourite Empire to play. Me placing the endgame crisis so late was definitely a mistake. I thought it would add something else to the game, but sadly it just didn't. And I really hope this isn't such a bad ending that it's put a bad taste on the entire episode because I've really enjoyed myself. I don't think I've had quite as much fun in Stellaris as I have with this empire. I truly, truly love this and I love the increase in difficulty. If I do play again before the next DLC, I am going to be playing on the hardest difficulty, perhaps with this empire, perhaps with a different one. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And once again, I really do apologize with how long these Let's Play take, I just can't restart the game or do something else, and I can't change when the endgame crisis is going to occur. Perhaps I can with console commands, but I purposefully stay away from those, because as soon as you know how to use them, well, then that temptation is always going to be there. It was the same when I played Ark and other games. Cheating is just, well, it's kind of anti-fun, really, isn't it? And just having that temptation. Admittedly, seven plus hours is a bit of a stretch there, but you get the idea. It would have taken many more hours to complete this, especially of how slow the game is running right now. 
So thank you so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I do apologise again for how this has ended. Trust me, no one is more disappointed than myself, but I would rather get this video out now than perhaps in a few more days' time. So thank you so much for watching. Any suggestions for the future, and if I will play another run, then of course, tell me in the comments. Thank you, and goodbye. And at least we got one zoo completed.